A couple was left with no choice but to stay the night in a remote cabin after their car broke down in an eerie small town. When three masked strangers terrorized them with seemingly no motive at all, the couple had to fight for their survival. The movie begins in the woods, where a man is seen running away as if he were being chased. The man tripped and rolled over several times, hitting a huge rock in the process, which then injured him. The man tried to crawl away as a masked stranger approached him with an ax and kicked him down before hacking him up. Maya and Ryan are on their third day of their three-day road trip across the country. It was also their fifth year anniversary, so they decided to celebrate it as they headed to Portland, Oregon, where Maya was planning to get a job. Maya and Ryan expressed their love for each other and kissed, only to jump away from each other when they heard a loud horn. Ryan panicked as he stomped on the brakes to avoid colliding with another car heading the opposite way. Then he continued driving, but his breathing was still ragged, and when Maya noticed her boyfriend wasn't calming down, she grabbed his inhaler for him, and Ryan inhaled it deeply. After driving for a while, Ryan couldn't recognize the place anymore, and Maya had lost signal. So Ryan just continued driving in hopes of getting signal again. They reached a small town called Venus with a population of only 468. They stopped over at a diner to eat and they noticed the odd stares of the people inside when they entered. The waitress approached Maya and Ryan's table, introducing herself as Shelly and asking for their orders. Ryan ordered something vegetarian for Maya and a smile broke out across Shelly's face upon hearing it, but she still wrote it down anyway. Once Shelly left, Maya reprimanded Ryan for eating something unhealthy again, and Ryan just jokingly told his girlfriend to let him eat what he wanted, especially since it's their anniversary anyway. Another couple overheard their conversation and introduced themselves as Eden and Neil, saying that it was also their anniversary and asking if Maya and Ryan were married. Everyone in the diner seems to be listening to the conversation, and the diner's cook, Carol, wonders why Ryan hasn't put a ring on Maya's finger if they've been dating for five years already. Ryan was uncomfortable with the conversation but still smiled respectfully as he put an end to it. After eating, Ryan paid for their meal and asked Carol for directions to the highway. As Carol wrote down the directions, Maya and Ryan noticed the missing poster of a man named Jeff Morell on the wall behind Carol. Seeing them looking at the poster, Shelley informed them that Jeff Morell was a big corporate finance guy who passed through Venus, ate at the diner, then completely disappeared after. After getting the directions, Maya and Ryan returned to their car to continue their road trip. However, the car wasn't starting, and Maya and Ryan flinched in surprise when a man suddenly appeared beside the driver's window. The man introduced himself as Rudy and offered to check the car for them. He informed the couple that the alternator was shot and they needed a new one. Rudy could get the necessary parts. However, the dealer's shop over in Eugene was already closed and he could only get the parts first thing in the morning. That would mean that Maya and Ryan would have to stay in Venus for the night, and since the motels were closed for repairs, the couple had to stay in an Airbnb rented out by an older guy named Joe Gressis. Ryan refused, accusing Rudy of scamming them, and Maya had to cut him off and excuse themselves to talk to Ryan. Ryan explained that he noticed Rudy was watching them enter the diner and he believed that the mechanic had purposely done something to their car because suddenly their car needed fixing when it was still in perfect condition when they left it to eat. Maya reassured her that they weren't being scammed and that Ryan was just being paranoid again. Maya agreed to leave the car in Rudy's garage for it to be fixed, and Shelly offered to drive them, which Shelly thanked her for. When the couple turned around again, they saw two young boys staring at them and the younger of the two handed them a poster telling them how the Lord would set them free. The couple just took the poster and smiled awkwardly. Shelley drove the couple to a remote cabin and the two settled in. It was nighttime when Ryan noticed that the fridge was broken and Maya called Joe's number, which was written down on the paper sticking to the fridge, to inform him about the broken fridge. The camera's position implied that while Maya was talking on the phone, someone was watching her. After the phone call, the couple cuddled outside the cabin, relishing the peaceful silence of the night, before Ryan carried Maya inside the cabin to make the night more enjoyable. The intimate moment was rudely interrupted by a loud knock at the door, and they opened the door to see someone's figure. Due to the darkness outside, they couldn't see the person's face, only the silhouette. 
But by the sound of the voice, the person was female. The girl asked if Tamara was inside, and Maya claimed that she must have had the wrong home. They watched as the person walked away without a word, and Ryan wondered in suspicion where the girl came from, as the cabin they were staying in was in the middle of nowhere. Ryan saw the girl standing still close by, and he tightened the strangely loose light bulb to see better. But when he looked back, the girl was gone. The couple went back to cuddling when Ryan felt the need to use his inhaler, but they had forgotten it in the car, and he decided to use the motorcycle parked out front to get his inhaler and also get food for a hungry Maya. Ryan left and Maya decided to video call her friend to pass the time when she heard a loud clatter from outside. She ended the call to check, and when she heard footsteps thudding on the floor, she thought it was Ryan. However, she had a sudden feeling that whoever was outside that kept banging on the door wasn't Ryan. She peeked through the peephole and didn't see anyone, but she did hear the voice of the same young girl asking if Tamara was inside. Maya replied that there was no Tamara in the cabin, and when she received no response, she peeked again to see the girl covering the peephole with her palm. Then she was gone, and for a second, Maya was relieved that the girl had left. But then there was banging on the door again. Maya was so focused on the door that she was unaware of a person passing by behind her. When she sat back down on the couch, she couldn't see her phone on the table where she left it. She found it on a shelf, and upon grabbing it, she heard the sound of a girl singing just outside the kitchen's window. But no one was there when she heard the back door latch clicking. She slowly approached the door as she contacted Dial. She was sent to voicemail, and she left him a message about the girl coming back and then leaving again, asking Ryan to come back immediately. Maya sent the voicemail and went out the back door to check before going back inside, playing music as she tried to calm her nerves while waiting for Ryan. Maya played the piano when she heard a thud coming from somewhere in the house. She was already scared, but she shook it off and resumed playing, unaware of a presence behind her. Meanwhile, Ryan had just gotten his inhaler from the car when he got startled by Rudy, who thought he was a car thief at first. Ryan sat on the motorcycle again and drove to a food truck, where he also found Annie, Shelley's co-worker, and the couple Eden and Neil drinking together. Annie asked him to drink with them, but since Maya was waiting for him, he refused and bought food. The vendor handed him another poster, and Ryan declined as he had already gotten one earlier. Maya was taking a shower, not noticing the masked man watching her, and when she was done, the lights suddenly went out. There was a loud clang coming from inside the cabinet, and Maya opened it to find different masks inside. Maya accidentally dropped her phone, and when she picked it up, she found a masked stranger standing in front of her. Maya ran away and hid from the masked stranger. She saw the shadow from the gap under the door, and when the door flew open, Maya gasped in fear, only to realize that it was Ryan. Ryan hasn't noticed anyone else, and when Maya told him about the masked stranger, Ryan dismissed it as the mask Maya described was similar to a picture hanging on the wall. Another knock, and Ryan had enough. They went out to see the same girl, and Ryan chased the girl away. The couple was eating when they saw blood dropping on their fries. They looked up, and Maya screamed at the sight of a dead animal hanging above. It was then that Ryan realized that Maya was telling the truth when she said someone had been inside, and the couple immediately locked the doors. It was futile as the big male stranger wearing a scarecrow mask destroyed the front door with an ax. The couple barricaded themselves inside the bedroom, but the scarecrow masked man just destroyed the door again, staring at them in silence before walking away. Noticing the scarecrow was gone, the couple went out to get the motorcycle, but then it suddenly exploded. The scarecrow was standing on the other side of the burning motorcycle, and the couple ran back inside the cabin, locking themselves up in the bathroom, where Ryan grabbed a weapon. Maya was reminded of Shelley telling them that Joe is a hunter, and she figured that there must be a hunting rifle somewhere inside the house. Maya then realized that the cabin has a raised foundation, so they went through the crawl space under the house, where Maya got her hand stuck on a nail. Ryan wrapped a cloth around her hand, and they crawled out of the crawl space leading outside. The couple ran away from the cabin when Ryan tripped over and dropped his inhaler. Ryan was limping after falling, so Maya assisted him as they entered the shed not realizing that the girl wearing the pinup girl mask was in there with them. 
Ryan handed Maya a weapon and looked for anything useful in the shed, leaving Maya alone for a bit. It was a mistake as the two masked strangers, the Scarecrow and the pinup girl, cornered her. The Scarecrow grabbed Maya from behind when Ryan came with a shotgun he found. The couple went to the cabin's porch, unaware of the third masked stranger, and Ryan immediately shot the first person he saw. However, Maya realized that the man Ryan had shot wasn't wearing any mask, which means that he wasn't one of the murderers who were after them. Despite her own guilt, Maya set aside her feelings to comfort her boy, who cried in guilt upon realizing that it was the cabin's owner, Joe, who had come to check on the broken fridge. She reassured him that it was fine and that he was just trying to protect her. Ryan found Joe's car keys and the couple stole the car to escape from the masked strangers, who had become a lot more aggressive upon realizing that they now had the means to escape. The pinup girl destroyed the passenger's window and the scarecrow used his own vehicle to ram against Joe's car repeatedly, destroying it. Ryan urged Maya to run away as he stayed to shoot the scarecrow, but the masked man wasn't in his car anymore. He found him approaching from the front and he fired the shotgun, causing the masked man to run away. Meanwhile, Maya was hiding under a pile of leaves to avoid detection by the masked girl after her. Using the phone she got from Joe's car, she called 911, but the operator couldn't hear her as she was talking in a hushed voice. Maya was frozen in place when she found a corpse laying beside her, and the operator informed her that they're pinpointing her location so they could get to her. Maya left her hiding place only to be attacked by the masked girl, rendering her unconscious. Ryan, on the other hand, was being chased by the scarecrow and the pinup girl. He was hiding behind an abandoned, broken vehicle where he found a plastic bottle with a small amount of water in it. He poured the water on the ground beside him and used it as an inhaler before he resumed looking for Maya. Instead of Maya, he found a pinup girl and held her at gunpoint. The pinup girl dropped her weapon and turned around slowly, mocking Ryan. Ryan asked where Maya was, but the pinup girl didn't answer. And next thing Ryan knew, he was knocked out by the scarecrow. When he regained consciousness, he found himself tied up inside the cabin with Maya beside her. Ryan promised Maya that everything was going to be okay, and he decided it was the perfect timing to ask Maya to marry him, which Maya said yes to. Their short, happy moment ended when the pinup girl stabbed Ryan in the gut, and Maya cried as she held her lover's hand. The scarecrow stood behind the couple and kicked down Ryan's chair, causing him to fall to the ground and spit out blood. Maya then asked why the masked strangers were coming after them, and the pinup girl answered that there's no motive at all. The couple was just in their small town, and they didn't like it. The pinup girl handed the knife to the scarecrow, who stood in front of Maya and stabbed her. He did the same thing he did to Ryan and kicked down Maya's chair. The three masked strangers stood there for a while staring at the couple before leaving when they heard the sound of police sirens. Ryan died as he was fatally stabbed but Maya survived since she got immediate help, unlike Ryan. The movie ended with Maya being confined in the hospital and an eerie indication that it isn't over yet.